How about some community news? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I've got a few things that I can share today. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to pop up my screen. Uh, yes. And yes, perfect. Awesome. Thank you, sir. A um, couple of things that I wanted to share that we came across in the community first. Uh, uh, one thing I saw earlier today, um, Damien, as always, coming through with some log analytics uh, solutions here. And today he has a blog post on uh, uh, creating a Lenovo devices warranty dashboard. So for those of you that are using Lenovo devices with Intune um, and a little bit of log analytics, which is um, something that, that we like to use uh, for sure, this may be something that you want to check out. Um, and in in addition to this, of course, we've shared a number of posts from Damien where he's got a lot of great log analytics solutions that we recommend you check out as well. Um, I haven't had a chance to dive into this entire uh, post yet, uh, but John Towles has a... Um, post that I came across around um, conditional access policies in Entra. Um, and he talks about some of the common ones uh, that you may want to um, configure. So a little bit out of our normal um, uh, systems management sharing, but I know a lot of us are actually dealing with conditional access policies and things like that uh, as well today. And some of these actually do dive into device compliance through Intune, um, as well as things like MFA for Intune enrollment, as you can see here. So please go check out John's uh, post. Um, very well written, as all of his are, um, and a lot of great information in here that will help uh, either get you started or just review and see if these are things that uh, you need to take a look at in your environment. Um, also, came across this post uh, from a few days ago from our friend Jürgen, um, and it is a remediation script that you can run on demand to actually reset Windows Update on a device. Um, short and sweet here, uh, that's pretty simply what this script will do. Um, will allow you to go ahead and put in that detection, that remediation, and if you do need to reset Windows Update on a device, which if you've been in uh, uh, systems management for uh, more than two months, you've probably had to do that. Um, so thank you, Jorgen, for uh, this solution here. It's great stuff. Jorgen, he's another machine in this community, that's for sure. He doesn't stop. He does not. <laughs> but we love him for it. Um, last but not least, wanted to talk about this for for a minute or two. Um, so saw this announcement uh, a couple of days ago from Lior. Um, we're finally getting some device hardware inventory in Intune, which is fantastic. Um, this is something that uh, we've all wanted for a very long time to come through in Intune. Uh, a lot of organizations... Uh, still using co-management specifically because they can, uh, even if they're managing their devices mostly with Intune, uh, they can still get hardware inventory and deep, rich hardware inventory from Config Manager. So this looks like this is going to be the first step to bringing some level of hardware inventory into Intune. Um, now, I happen to be uh, sitting here reading through this blog post uh, before we hopped on, and a couple of the FAQs here at the bottom that I wanted to point out. Um, so we don't have a timeline, specific timeline yet, but they're targeting a release of this calendar year. So hopefully we'll see this within the next three and a half months. Um, and a couple of other things that I wanted to point out that I thought were notable at first, uh, this is not going to be able to use for um, targeting or dynamic device groups. Uh, it looks like they are looking into that, um, as well as hopefully um, developing that improvement. Um, in addition to that, one thing that stuck out to me was that with this first release, this will this information will not be available via graph. If you want to get this information um, and export it, you'll actually have to go in and export uh, to a CSV file from uh, the UI. 
like you would in a lot of other um, reports and, and views within the Intune Admin Center or Entra Admin Center. So um, wanted to point those things out specifically. Those stuck out to me. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this coming out, Johan? Well, I mean, I, I love that they finally do get these additional inventory pieces into Intune. It's been a common request for years and years, and it's intended to, to bridge the gap a little bit between Intune and, and ConfigMan in, in this area, even though that that gap is not closed, even remotely closed just yet. But I'm kind of disappointed that these basic functionality, like connecting to a graph and get the content and, and actually using it uh, in the platform in the same way we would do collection queries in a config man environment, it's a little bit disappointing, but heck, uh, I understand that, that development resources uh, sometimes are not available uh, in the, the way a, a program manager may may want to have them, but still, all right, let's see what, what time brings. And uh, I'm excited to try out the new feature at least. Definitely. Well said. Um, so, yeah, that was what I had for today. All right, then. Well, I have uh, two things on my mic. Um, well, three, actually. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Yes, sir. Real quick, I did just see a comment from Jesse, and I forgot to mention this. I told you I was going to, and I didn't. Uh, he said, in Microsoft fashion, I hope they don't charge for the inventory enhancement. And it was on Twitter that this is part of Intune Plan 1. That was an important point that I meant to mention. <laughs> so what so, you're saying, there is no additional license cost to it, just to, to be clear. Correct. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> ah, heck no, no worries. It's a, it's a, it's a good one, of course. Of course. Yeah. Now, our friends uh, over at Petri, next week they are running a free virtual mini conference. And it's uh, Victor, uh, that I know since my time with Trusec, who is presenting a session on basically protect your backups. And uh, that is more important than you might think. Um, I remember still to this day vividly, uh, even though it's only almost a decade ago, uh, one of my first ransomware incidents I was assigned to as an engineer and meaning go out to the customer, help them rebuild their platforms again. And this customer actually did uh, a bit of homework before. So they had not just one backup systems, they had two backup systems. Uh, Disk-based, though, also. But they also have a tape archive. But So they have two servers that control their disk-based backup or disk-based backup. But guess which servers the attackers encrypted first? Oh, yeah, the backup servers. <laughs> of course. And then they started to encrypt everything else. So the problem with that was that the index of the tapes was also on one of those servers. So... There was a poor gentleman who had to stand in the cold data center with a with a hat and a jacket on for almost a week, just shuffling in tape after tape after tape to rebuild the indexes so they can learn what was on the tape in order to, to restore the right stuff. So I highly recommend to take a look at this session. Um, Victor's a good presenter, and uh, you should have surprises you with, with some facts and tips that you may not know before. So. The price is just right, too. So next Wednesday, uh, you can watch it before office hours, of course, because it's in the morning, uh, central time here, September 18, 9.30. So recommend watching that one. Now, uh, Monday morning, we also published um, a new version of PowerShell deployment. Very excited about this one. Uh, it went up to the branch first, the, the, the restart with the SOA development branch here, and then went into the master yesterday morning. So two releases in two days, very excited about this one. And I wanted to show some of the changes that we did primarily into the deployment wizard for PSD. For those of you that are new to PSD, it's an extension of MDT. 
that uh, fully gives you Windows 11 platform support in it. We enabled in deployment over HTTPS, so you can do cloud imaging. We added in peer-to-peer -peer support, so you can leverage branch cache to do peering or content. But long story short, it's a deployment solution that works out of the web server. So you can host that web server in your local data center. You can have it in your on your laptop if you want, on a Windows 10 box or Windows 11 box. But more commonly, you have it up in the cloud somewhere so that you can image devices wherever they are. So Azure, Amazon, whatever you like. So if I jump over to one of my test servers here, I'm going to boot up a virtual machine. And boot up from a media here and wait patiently until WinP loads. So we are leveraging uh, background info, uh, sys internals in the background to update the text while the WinP start to figure out what it needs, do some pre work check checking the configuration of the network, making sure you have enough disk and memory and whatnot. Uh, to the right, you see a fairly new menu option where you can show your hard drives. You can configure static IP if you want, and you can also wipe hard drives if needed uh, in between the attempts. But this is what the new Deployment Wizard looks. This one has been mainly developed by uh, Mr. Dick Tracy. He works for Microsoft and he's been helping us with this wizard for a good two and a half years now, uh, maintaining it and making it better. But this is a truly wizard in, oh, sorry, truly PowerShell driven wizard. So no compiled binaries, no nothing, just PowerShell, a lot of PowerShell. So anywho, go through this one. There is a readiness page, uh, pick a sequence, pick a hard drive. This is something that even MDT doesn't have, but we added that in. Uh, give it a name, PC number 15. Uh, pick a device role. And this is something you usually use to uh, assign list of applications or list of settings. In this case, I'm picking a developer station. Uh, Intune group, allowing you to add machines into Intune, uh, typically through a web service or just a custom script. And then admin credentials, regional settings, Add a quick summary. And like the normal MDT deployment wizard, uh, these wizard panes can be toggled on or off. And then there is a summary screen, and off you go. And from now on, it's just a regular uh, MDT sequence. The difference is, if I minimize this one here, behind the scenes, if I look into the folder where we have the stuff, in a normal MDT deployment share, you have like 200 some VB scripts here. Here you find just PowerShell script instead. So we basically intercept the calls from the sequence. Every time the sequence tries to launch a VB script, we smack it on the fingers and say, nope, use this PowerShell script instead. So that's how it works. So yes, very, very excited to, uh, to show this or share this information. We've been working on it for quite a while. Uh, hoping that you will try this one out, give us feedback. Uh, if you stumble across something, file an issue, we'll try to get to it. But all in all, quite happy with this one. Awesome stuff as always. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir.